Our Disney Plus obsession is about to get a whole lot worse. They're following up The Mandalorian with a deep dive into the MCU, and Falcon and the Winter Soldier, WandaVision, and Loki are just the start. Maybe we'll finally get to see She-Hulk and Hulk together in the MCU? Heck, maybe Smart Hulk is the one who created She-Hulk. <gasps> Let's dive into everything we know about the new series. So first things first, who is this She-Hulk person? If you've never read the comics, you might just think that She-Hulk's a female version of the Hulk and nothing more. You'd be wrong though, because Jennifer Walters is a hero all of her own and an awesome one at that. So let's take a trip to the ancient time of 1980. In those days, superheroes really didn't do movies very often. Well, ones that weren't Superman at least. No, the place for superheroes was television. Most notably for She-Hulk were the Six Million Dollar Man, its spin-off The Bionic Woman, and of course The Incredible Hulk. Stanley and the folks at Marvel started to think that TV audiences might want a female spin-off of the popular Hulk show too. So they set about creating a new version of the mean green superhero. With the first issue of Savage She-Hulk, a new hero was born. Dun -dun -dun -dun. When Bruce Banner's cousin Jennifer Walters gets hurt by mobster bad guys, Banner has to give her a blood transfusion. Now no one knows that he's got radioactive Hulk blood, so it's a big surprise when the small and shy Jen suddenly gets green and muscular. Fortunately for her though, her Hulk doesn't come with as much baggage as Banner's. She's not mindless or hideous, in fact, Walters enjoys being She-Hulk so much that she decides to stay that way. Her superhero career was a huge success pretty quickly. She joined the Avengers, the Fantastic Four, and had an epic solo career as well. Not only that, but she maintained her job as a big green attorney as well. She's like Daredevil, only prettier and not quite as dramatic. The decades have delivered quite a few awesome She-Hulk stories that you should check out. If only there were some sort of resource for comic books that could tell you which ones were the best. Hmm, man, that would be a cool website. So how could the MCU create She-Hulk now that we know she'll have her own Disney Plus show? Now the obvious route would be that they could go with the comics version. Perhaps Jennifer Walters gets hurt, and the new taco-loving smart Hulk is the only one that can save her. He did create a time machine and snapped half the universe back into existence, so this should be a cakewalk. Then once Jen is saved, he'd have to coach her in the ways of hulking. Now that he's a major celebrity and not a mindless monster, it should be much easier. Get ready for some montages about having to do everyday tasks with giant green fingers. Cue the montage. Hopefully we'll get a flashback that shows how Banner managed to create Smart Hulk in the first place. The scene being left out of Endgame was one of the biggest complaints about the movie. Well, it was one of the only complaints about the movie, actually. The end of the Thanos arc was basically the opposite of the Game of Thrones ending that way. Now knowing the MCU's penchant for dramatically changing comic book origins, it might go a different way. Seeing as Thunderbolt Ross has had such a big part of the MCU, and he's obsessed with getting his own Hulk, he could be the culprit. Maybe he conducts another experiment to make his own version of the Gamma Radiated Mayhem Monster. Seeing as how his last try went really badly, it might make some sense to go with someone who has Banner's DNA this time. Of course, this would lead him to finally becoming the Red Hulk like he does in the comic books. Fans have been dying to see him go red since he got his first appearance in The Incredible Hulk. They were also hoping to see Edward Norton in The Avengers, so they're used to disappointment. Speaking of actors, who are they going to get to play Jen? Well, the internet is full of rumors and fans casting about that very subject. There seems to be a big difference among fans as to whether the actress playing She-Hulk should be muscular or tiny. They could either use CGI to make a petite actress hulky, like Ruffalo, or use CGI to make a jacked up actress tiny, like Steve Rogers. The first actress rumored for the role is Marvel TV favorite Rosario Dawson. While she certainly got the acting chops in the build for the role, Dawson was all over Netflix Marvel shows as Claire Temple. Then Disney Plus The Mandalorian came out, and everyone freaked out over Gina Carano's Cara Dune. For many fans, she would be the perfect actress to play She-Hulk, no CGI required. On the tinier actress front, Anna Kendrick has been a recent favorite in the She-Hulk rumor mill. Fresh off her starring role in Disney Plus Christmas hit Noel, it would be really easy to see her as Jennifer Walters. Though it would take a tremendous amount of CGI to make her seem threatening. She's still more of a squirrel girl, honestly. Seriously, picture it. By far the most popular actress rumored for the role is Community and Glow actress Alison Brie. She's shown her comedic chops and her fighting chops in both of those series. Her lawyering skills in the Law & Order episode of Community was pretty impressive. Also, she's just one of those actresses who's always seemed like she should be more famous than she is. That whole looking for a shorter Anne Hathaway thing must not translate well to the big screen. In fact, Marvel recently released that they were looking for, and they specifically stated a quote-unquote Alison Brie type. How embarrassing would it be if Alice and Brie lost out on essentially playing herself? Maybe Marvel isn't quite over the shade she dropped on them in the last episode of Community. 
Everyone's also assuming that Mark Ruffalo will be back as Bruce Banner, but that hasn't been confirmed yet. Frankly, while Ruffalo is great, it would be pretty hilarious if they recast him a third time. That or they control fans by having Ed Norton magically reappear as the character. He's not the only Hulk that's said to be in the series, though. Frankly, it just wouldn't be right if the original Hulk Lou Ferrigno wasn't in it at least do a cameo at some point. Though it would be cool to see him get a bigger role this time. He could easily play She-Hulk's father. Then there's the matter of Jen's love life. Frankly, a superhero just isn't complete without that suffering love interest waiting in the wings. So who is Jennifer Walters' version of Pepper Potts? Well, it's not quite that simple. You see, She-Hulk has dated a lot of Marvel characters. So many superheroes ranging from Thor to Luke Cage have been linked with the beautiful brawler. The one that made the biggest impression, though, is undoubtedly Wyatt Wingfoot, though. Originally introduced as Johnny Storm's best friend, Wyatt quickly fell for Jen when she joined the Fantastic Four. Martin Sinsmar from Westworld and the Magnificent Seven would be great as the MCU's first major Native American character. As for the villains of the series, there are a plethora of options. Obviously, fans would love to see Red Hulk more than anything. That being said, it would kind of be a shame for her to go up against She-Hulk and not the original Hulk. Their comic and cartoon shows always have been super epic. Fans have been very eager to see the classic Hulk throw down again after his ill-fated fight with Thanos. What better way for him to have a comeback than to fight She-Hulk? The Incredible Hulk left a few other villains waiting in the wings as well. We know that Emil Blonsky is just chilling on the raft. His Zemo manages to escape in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Abomination could probably make it out too. Also, he was just the best part of that movie, let's be real. The other baddie who got introduced in Marvel's one-off is the leader. We got to see Samuel Stearns get his mind irradiated by gamma rays for about two seconds in that film. It only seems right that arguably Hulk's arch nemesis make an appearance at least once. His mind control powers could make for a good twist, as he could turn Smart Hulk back to a rage monster that Jen would have to take on. Tell me you don't want to see that showdown. While all of these villains would be perfect for the show, none of them are specifically She-Hulk baddies. No, her arch rival is the one and only Titania. She's a former wrestler turned superpower villain. Her grudge matches against She-Hulk are some of the best moments of our hero's comic history. Frankly, her inclusion in the show is almost a given. While Gina Carano could certainly kill it as She-Hulk, we all know that she'd be a better Titania. She's always better when she plays characters that are at least a little bit bad. No one remembers Haywire. Other She-Hulk villains include Nicholas Trask, who was originally the gangster who was responsible for Jen's injuries. There are a ton of actors who could do this role, but it would be awesome if Bree's Community co-star Joel McHale got it. He does know how to play sleazy, and he's already got the marvelous abs required for the MCU. There are other female villains for the series like Ultima and Ruby Thursday. Both are extremely comic booky characters, who would likely be reworked entirely to fit in the MCU. It would kind of be cool to see her glow nemesis Betty Gilpin, or Community's Jillian Jacobs nab the role. No matter what though, there's literally no way they can deliver the worst Hulk villain. That prize will always be held by Nick Nolte and his mutated pets from Ang Lee's Hulk. Remember that multi-million dollar costing fight scene between Hulk and a pair of giant dogs? Don't worry, She-Hulk, you can never be worse than that. With all this talk about Marvel's shameful second film, you might be thinking the show will be that Incredible Hulk sequel at last. Well, you'd be wrong. You see, the MCU doesn't actually have all the rights to the Hulk. Sure, they are allowed to use him in their other movies, but his solo features are still controlled by Universal. That's probably why Marvel is going the She-Hulk route instead of doing a Hulk series that could focus on World War Hulk or something. Also, there's a lot of talk about a Captain Marvel-led female team-up movie that She-Hulk would be perfect for. Who knows, we might even get a Brie Larson cameo. We know that MCU's heading for another big space adventure. Carol Danvers could be taking up Nick Fury's old job of building a new team. These Marvel shows are definitely going to have post credit scenes, right? It seems as though they're basically really long Marvel movies. It's gonna be great, everybody. Frankly, as far as her solo show is concerned, it'll probably be a lot more like another forgotten MCU property. Since Jen will have to balance her super heroics with her time as an attorney, it will be quite a bit like Daredevil. Until the day that Disney decides to bring Matt Murdock back, this is as close as we'll probably get. In the comic, she even has to defend Michael Morbius. It'd be kind of hilarious if the Jared Leto Morbius was at least referenced as one of her former cases. Sure, Sony and Disney like to pretend he's not in the MCU, but he's totally in the MCU. All of this speculation is just beating around the bush, though. We all know what Hulk fans really want, and that would be a She-Hulk update of the Incredible Hulk Ultimate Destruction. There just really hasn't been a superhero game that's been that brutally awesome since. Then we could get She-Hulk versions of Hulk hands. There's just really no better way to get away with beating up your friends than with Hulk hands. So the pressure is on Disney. A lot of cool merchandise is riding on this. Don't drop the ball like you did with the potential Christmas gold mine that was Baby Yoda. It better be amazing. 
Regardless of what ultimately happens with the show, all we'll have to do is wait for Mark Ruffalo's first interview. Knowing him, he'll give us an episode-by-episode -episode synopsis of the whole thing before he realizes it. This is the guy who accidentally spoiled the end of Infinity War, Endgame, and live-streamed Ragnarok. Frankly, it will be kind of surprising if he doesn't just drop the whole thing on Facebook randomly one day. Thanks, Mark. We love you. There you have it. Everything you need to know about the Hulks, both she and smart. What do you think will happen in the new series? Will we see Red Hulk? Please let us see Red Hulk. Let us know in the comments and be sure to like and subscribe for more from CBR. Thanks for watching.